Good evening and good morning, everybody. My name is Vishal Gondal, and I'm the founder and CEO of Goki. Welcome to Goki Health Talks, our series where we get you some amazing people from across the world to talk about health, well-being, and how can you use technology to live longer. And today I'm really excited because my guest is somebody who I really admire. His name is John Felicara, who is an athlete, scientist, entrepreneur, and what we call biohacker based in Canada. Born in France, he's the founder and CEO of several interesting startups in the health space. He's also done some amazing things by combining neuroscience, calisthenics, mindfulness, and his own experience around health and overall vitality is amazing. He even runs a very interesting program, which is all about making you better or optimizing a human. And he runs what is called a human optimization program. So without further delay, let me once again welcome John to the show. Thank you for having me. Thank you for this presentation. Really appreciate it and uh, very honored to be here with you. Uh, and uh, hi to India there. Uh, good morning, folks in North America who follows too. And uh, I'm super thrilled to uh, get into this discussion. I've been so much looking forward to it and... Uh, I love everything. You know, all respect goes back to you because I have so much respect for what you do, your company, your organization, and all you've done before. So, brother, we were meant to meet one day. No, no, amazing. I'm really happy that uh, we've been able to get this session together. So, so let me start with my first and most important question that what is biohacking? A lot of people are just confused. I know this term has now been used several times, but people are still confused on what biohacking is. So in your world, how do you define biohacking? Oh, thanks for asking me in my words, uh, because biohacking is really a buzzword. And today, everybody try to get into biohacking in a way or another, and it's criticized in a way or another as well, because uh, some people think that biohacking is putting chip in your head or uh, having a harms, uh, robotic and stuff like that. It's not this. For me, biohacking, actually, it's just using natural processes to enhance our wellness overall and on health. So in other terms, it's not doing anything else than what our body requires, but doing the proper things to make sure that our body and our minds are aligned and are in a good shape. Because I'm from the science uh, field. And uh, if you think about hacking, Hacking is not possible at the cellular level. You cannot hack anything in, in your body. It's impossible to hack because your cells are made to function. Uh, so the terms biohacking, I would translate it to well improvement or soma improvement, some things like that. So for me, it's uh, implementing a routine, daily routine, exposing to light, which are it's required for your eyes and for your hormone uh, uh, flow and your blood flow and everything, uh, doing simple, simple things, drinking water, meditation, everything that is related to enhance your brain first, because everything starts from the head, the brain, and goes to the body. So if your mind is clear, your body will be clear. If your head is performing, your brain is performing, your body will be performing. And the contrary of what beliefs are, our brain keeps growing and expanding and creating new neurons. So biohacking for me is making my brain better in order to have a better and a stronger and a faster body. Yeah. Also, there is a lot of talk around wellness. There's a lot of talk around mindfulness. There's a lot of talk around now this new term called preventive healthcare. Mm -hmm. But you talk about human optimization. 
So how is human optimization different than all these things which are very commonly used and people are, you know, taking supplements and people are doing yoga and people are going to the gym and they're doing cardio. I mean, there are so many forms of keeping themselves fit. So how so, is this too different? Okay. So step by step, if you look at uh, everything you said, absolutely, it's it, 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 each chunk is a part of a human optimization. But when I see people taking 150 pills of supplements, uh, getting on their couch, eating potato chips, not going outside at least for two hours a day uh, and not moving at all, I don't think that is the optimization. Even if you do meditation and you sit on your couch for two hours or you sit in front of your computer or you don't expose yourself to light, uh, but you take supplement and you think that you're improving your health, not true. You're doing nothing, nothing good, except taking supplement that most of the time you're just gonna reject. Um, human optimization is a combination of everything. It's a combination of everything in the proper way. So I don't take any supplement or very few and only natural ones. I use only natural things and things that put your body in an alignment, you know, people are always talking about mind-body connection. Oh, we're one, okay? <laughs> it's part of us. But it is true that the mind-body connection in some how needs to be aligned in a certain way. So there is couple for implementation that some people say it's biohacking uh, that have to be put together uh, on a daily basis and as a routine, because it's important to have routine in life and if you implement those routines, like, let me take my own life, how I do it for me to have my own uh, um, health optimization. I wake up early in the morning, 5 a.m. I drink a lot of water when I wake up just to activate my system. I move right away because it's important to have your organs and your muscle stretched a bit in the morning. You can do yoga or you can do just stretching like I do. And the first thing I do, I go outside and I light, no light, uh, cloud, no cloud, cold, no cold, because Canada can be cold in, 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 in the winter. I go outside. And that's the most important thing because that triggers in terms of science, some um, effect on your brain and on your hormone release for making sure that your circadian rhythm will be aligned with what you do and you are going to go to bed at night with the need of sleep and to sleep uh, profoundly and, and, and well. And then I'm going to do take caffeine. Some don't, but I do take caffeine. It's for some, it, it works for others. They're just not tolerant to it. It could be tea. It's even better for um, um, health. And uh, I go exercising in the morning because I need to wake up my brain in order to have my brain optimized to what I have to achieve during the day. Now I'm just putting a pause on what I said. When I wake up at five in the morning, I take one single goal to achieve for the day. This is the first part of biohacking. You have to set yourself one goal, not a big one, but one goal that when you go back to bed at night is made, it's achieved. So I take off the pose, go back, work out. Uh, I can do it fasting or not fasting, depending on the day, because in the biohacking community, we've seen that uh, fasting gets to become a big trend. And it's great, actually. It, fasting is good. Fasting is good in a certain ways of doing it. And I would say that the best fasting ever and with enough scientific backup is uh, intermittent fasting. Uh, that's probably the most efficient one and the less dangerous one. Uh, you can do that once a week. You can do that uh, once every two weeks. I, I'll do it one or two days a week, most of the time. Uh, then I go work, but when I work again, and this is simple biohacking, I don't work like 
six hours because you're a CEO, you have to work for six hours in a boat and take a pause and then work another six hours. This is bullshit for me. You have to work aligned with your ultrogen rhythm, which is a cycle of about 90 minutes. We cannot keep focus for more, more than 90 minutes. We need breaks and we need that flow to be ongoing. So if you work for 90 minutes and you're efficient enough, you achieve way more work than sitting at your table and procrastinating in front of a computer for six hours. So I work for batches of 90 minutes. And sometimes even if, as a CEO and I run a couple of companies, I can work sometimes just two hours a day uh, like that, or sometimes four hours a day, sometimes more, but always respecting that 90 minute cycle. Then I'm gonna go outside, take a walk. And most of the time I don't take the same walk every day because I want my brain to be activated. I want my brain to be plastic most of the time. This is the, the secret of everything, having a triggering neuroplasticity. And my day goes like that. At night, I'm not going to expose myself to any uh, blue light starting a certain time, just to make sure that my cycle of sleep is respected. I use biohacking sounds and waves as well. So there's a couple of applications out there that are very cool. Uh, and, and Bineural beats are definitely yeah. something a lot of people yeah. use. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's more and more. And uh, I, you know, one of the guys that I respect the most is uh, uh, Dr. Patrick Porter. He brought out this uh, tool, the brain tap, with not only the sounds and 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 the wave, but uh, the visual as well. And this is like complete, so it works pretty well. You have other that are just sounds. Uh, binaural sounds or others just wave, but overall this works. Um, I'm testing at this time uh, Apollo Neuro, uh, working just on vibration, quite interesting stuff as well. So those are, you know, simple bio tools, gadgets, and uh, that makes your day better and makes your life optimiz optimized. But the secret of life optimization is the brain optimization. And, and, that, and that's really what my key question to you is, right? Yeah. That normally, physical exercise and to some extent diet is what we always talk about when we talk about health. And right. now maybe people are talking about meditation and mindfulness. But neuroscience is something which was never discussed as a tool for human optimization. And you were literally among the first people in the world yeah. Who started talking about neuroscience? So, first of all, for the people out here, if you could explain what is neuroscience, because not everybody knows what it is. And sure. how neuroscience is connected to human optimization, and how can a common person use neuroscience to enhance their life? Oh, perfect. That's a that that's a great question. Okay, neuroscience is not an old science. Uh, it's like a, a new trend in the science that is probably, I would say, a maximum 50 years. But uh, let's say the last 20 years is uh, as a certain bump. Uh, before you had psychology and psychiatry and you had the medical standard medical school. So uh, let's, let's, let's put it in perspective. You go to a doctor. What he's going to do is going to take x-ray or scan or whatsoever. And he has a map to see what the problem is. You go to a psychiatrist or a psychologue is gonna listen to you and kind of map your ideas and mindsets and, I, and mind overall. The bridge between them didn't exist before neuroscience. Neuroscience is the bridge between psychology and psychiatry and pure science and medicine because neuroscience helps to understand the concept of thought, expression, mindful, um, all these things related to the well-being of the person and the, the, the psychologic state of it, and the pure science of medicine with the diagnostic of heart rate, uh, flow, hormones, mainly hormones, neurons, uh, and things like that. There is this old story saying, uh, 
uh, fire, uh, uh, neurons that fire together uh, are stronger and you create that. But the, 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 the overall principle of this, of neuroscience uh, that bridge both uh, uh, science is to make people understand that the brain is the part that control everything. It starts from your head, it goes on the spinal cord and it goes to every single extent of your body. So, and everything works from chemical to electrical signal. If you have those electrical and chemical signal triggered properly, you can only optimize your life. Every negative thought translates to bad electrical signal, bad hormonal signal. Every positive thought translates to positive and increases uh, wellness and things like that. And it's back at it in the neuroscience, in the neural system. So this is why bringing neuroscience to everyday life is something, but my goal was bringing neuroscience more deeply into sport because it's known, as you said, sport increase wellness, increase health and longevity. We didn't know why exactly, but we know it worked. Uh, now with neuroscience, we understand the benefit of, of sport. We understand that uh, doing sport uh, increase uh, uh, longevity of your cell, uh, mitochondria, uh, regeneration, blood flow, heart rate, uh, whatsoever. But one of the most important things that uh, sport does, and some sport more than others, it increases neuroplasticity and it increases neurogenesis. What is neurogenesis? Ge neurogenesis is creating new neuron, new neuron connection. And uh, despite people who are thinking that uh, you've born with a certain number of neuron and you're gonna die with less neuron because you get old, this is ridiculous. You build neuron every single day. Every day you build neuron. Just make sure that you connect them together. Otherwise they're gonna die. And this is the principle of what I'm trying to preach. Human optimization is creating more neuron, if you can, and making sure they are connected. If they are connected, the pathway to mastering your body, your mind, your overall wellness is simple. It's easy, but you have to implement those things one step at a time and make sure that they are fairly aligned. It, it is said that one of the best ways to become young is to learn something new. So, for example, if you suddenly yes. learn a new language, what it's language learning kind of, you know, so many neurons are fired in your yeah. brain and, you know, it kind of pushes you. And similarly, when you do things outside your comfort zone, I think as humans, we don't want to push ourselves. So what yeah. you are effectively saying is that every time you push yourself from your comfort zone and try something new that creates this neurons and which kind of helps you. Are Absolutely. There any other practical ways where people can start working on their neuro, new, making new neurons as you yes. say? Yes. Actually, you are so right on that. You know, every time you change yourself on some things, you have to connect to, to create new neuron because it's something's new. So you have to learn the pathway to do it, like to, you have to create those connections that make sure that you learn the skill, language, piano, uh, sports, uh, launching a ball, uh, whatsoever, writing, uh, writing the other way, uh, brushing your teeth <laughs> with the other hand, all these challenging uh, uh, steps to be achieved, they have to be connected, mind-body connection again. They have to be align with neurons in your head as memory and forged as some things that becomes more and more automatic. So the more you change yourself for something, the more you're, you're, you're going to learn, the more you're going to create neuron. Otherwise, you cannot change yourself too much because when you get into a certain burden, you get stress, you trigger negative hormones and uh, uh, um, stress, and then it doesn't work. You have to 
actually go step by step, take a chunk of it and learn by failure. Because if you only learn by doing the things right, your brain will never know how to correct them. And it's the fact that you correct some errors, try it, errors, try it, errors, that make your connection better and stronger and more neuron around it and more skills you're going to get. Uh, and, and and this apply for everything, not only a, a language. You know, it's always learning is learning. You, your brain doesn't know if you're learning a skill or a language or writing or uh, handling uh, um, a tool or whatsoever. What he knows is he has to create some connection to make it working. And, to, and, and, and it is yeah. interesting. I mean, it's for example, when you are learning to ride a bicycle, you fail, 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 and then suddenly you can balance the bicycle. And then it's said that you normally will never forget once you ride a bicycle. So, it, so something really is, is getting connected in your brain. And once mm -hmm. that connection is made, it possibly stays for long. And if, if, if you keep it entertained, because our brain is kind of like lazy. Yeah. So bicycle is an example that it's, uh, it's also because when you learn to ride a bicycle, it's for life. But most of the things that you learn in your life, actually you forget them if you're not using them because your brain is lazy. And if it's not entertained, uh, with the same practice or uh, going back to the practice, it just will withdraw the connection and say, okay, I don't need it. It's taking too much space in my memory. Uh, so I'm going to get rid of that and just go to something new or other. So yes, you can improve your uh, learning uh, by doing that, but make sure that you entertain everything you learn because Otherwise, it's, it's going to be useless in the long term. And this is something that people forget. You know, they, they go, they, uh, I've learned the Spanish, Italian, and languages like that, but I'm not practicing them. I forget. Yeah. So I think there is also this entire trend right now that, you know, especially we are seeing this in India. People are doing marathons and ultra marathons, and people are doing CrossFit and weights and you know people have gone into very extreme form of athletics and exercising but how does that really help because what you are saying has got nothing to do with any extreme exercise on you are you in your world you don't even sweat a drop no how can no. without sweating or burning uh, any calories how can somebody optimize themselves uh, uh, actually Burning calories, yes, yes, yes. Uh, I burn a lot of calories um, because of the way I work out. But uh, uh, I don't sweat because I don't go on, on uh, except when I do H, uh, I interval, in, uh, inter um, interval training. Um, marathons. One of the benefits of marathon is only psychological, is changing yourself to achieve something bigger. And this is probably why people are trying to do marathon, ultra marathon, and changing themselves for you know something exceptional they've done in their life. But most of the time, they're not prepared for it. And the second thing, I don't like this type of exercise. I respect them, but I don't like that because they're too harsh on the body. They create so much inflammation. They create so much burden. And in terms in our world today with the COVID. They kill your immune system because of the inflammation and because of everything you create by running those long kilometers uh, and for uh, uh, so long time. So I'm against those things. I don't do. My father was a marathonian uh, and he was running marathon on a weekly base, um, but not me. Uh, I prefer to burn calories the other way using static movement, calisthenics and things like that. Uh, and to go back to marathon, you know, one of the things, my birthday was uh, uh, two weeks ago and uh, my, my brother said, you know what, John, you look younger than when you were, you were young. And I was just like, this is quite cool, actually. This is quite cool <laughs> because my goal was hijacking my body clock uh, and uh, making myself younger. And I think that my process is pretty much working well 
because I feel stronger, faster, better today than I was like 10, 15 years ago, of course. Uh, and to go back to marathon and, and things like that, the impact on your cell and cellular level and the impact of your skin is so damageable. It's so drastic. So no, uh, not for me. I prefer my sports. It's like an hour and a half, two hours of uh, uh, strength training using slow movement, but triggering every single connection of the body. And this is it. And this is how you burn calories. Uh, uh, you don't need to sweat. The, the people have been always, and that's a trend of our society. People think that because you sweat, you burn more calorie. Not true. Absolutely not true. Your brain burn more calorie than everything just by sitting and just watching this computer and talking to you. I'm burning calories like crazy because I'm thinking of what I'm going to answer you. Well, that's, that's really interesting, right? This whole concept that uh, you don't need to sweat to become stronger. But mm -hmm. then how do you become stronger? And calisthenics, while, you know, it looks, you know, the way you do it, it looks very simple. But for average people trying to do inversions and headstands, and I've been trying to do a handstand for some time. Uh, and we need to separately yeah. crack that with you. <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, so on headstand, just to kind of let you know, I started with unable to do a headstand and now I can do for five minutes, you know, okay. I'm I, I, unsupported. What okay. handstand has been tough, but again, you know, these are not intuitive for a lot of people, but how can an average person take, take up calisthenics? Okay. It's fairly simple. You know, everything starts by the day you start. Remember why you start and when you start, because some people say, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that, but they never start. So get started. And to get started, it's simple. You don't know how to do one push-up or two push-up. Start doing that. Push-up, pull-up, core. Core is the most important part of the body. If you have core, you have almost everything. The rest will just play with it. So you start by doing push-ups, you build up, you don't know, you, you do one push-up now. In 10 days, you can do probably more. But here's the trick, the trick. You have to set your brain to understand the goal. If you say, I want to do 100 push-ups, okay, your brain will go like, you don't know how to do one push-up, you want to do 100 push-ups, impossible. It's a stress factor. You're not going to make it. But... You can say, I want to do 100 push up in 10 days. Okay. So I take my 10 days, I cut them in 10 practices, and I go like, okay, the first day, my goal is going to be to make 10 push up from one. If I achieve my goal, the second day, I want to do 20 push up. And you put small chunk into your goal in a certain amount of time. Every time you achieve your goal on a daily basis, your serotonin goes into your body. You're full of endorphins. The reward system is activated. Your brain creates the connection, mind-body connection again. The day after, you're going to be pumped up to achieve your second goal. And the more you achieve your goal, the more your reward system works and the more you're going to be willing to achieve more goals. So chunk by chunk, after 10 days, you get there, 100 push-ups. And calisthenic is exactly the same. Handstand is exactly the same. You don't know how to do handstand? Do it against the wall. One, are, one lift, uh, one um, leg out, then two leg out, one second. And put your goal in perspective and in time. Set them that way. Your brain will be happy, your body will be more happy, and you're going to get stronger. I started two and a half years ago only. I was just doing body workout. And I, 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 I said, okay, I want to I I do planche. I want to do this. I set my goal one after the other. I use a couple of tricks, biohacking. I use transcranial uh, direct stimulation system, which really on personal opinion, 
increase the neuroplasticity. And uh, uh, for cop of move, I, I really uh, got them faster because I was using my headsets uh, for that. So, so but I overall, you that's have it. a backpack which you can connect to your yeah. body. And you have created all these tools. So how does these tools help? And you know, how can they make a difference in people's neuroplasticity? And that's the thing, you know, every time you do a, a movement, you need to have the movement in contraction, compression, like extension and, 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 and both way of your muscle and using um, opposite muscle as well. So the exo uh, pack that I have uh, is very simple. It goes from the center of gravity of uh, a human body attach as a backpack that is very comfortable and very lightweight. And then you have elastic bands that attach to arms and uh, feet in a way that uh, every single movement you do is multiplied. So you can adjust the strength. You, the band are like from 0.5 to 10. Uh, uh, and so if I do this movement, and I have nothing. Okay, I'm practicing this movement. If I do it on the floor and I'm doing a push-up, okay, I'm putting some resistance. But if I put resistance band, when I do this, I'm pulling my band. And when I do that, I have to go it to go slowly to make sure that I'm not smashing my head on, on the floor. So I work both ways. I increase my strength by 10 in last time. I, I'm waiting for some uh, report from uh, a lab, but uh, running with uh, my Exocyborg uh, uh, staff, if you run one kilometer with the band of uh, five pounds is the equivalent of seven kilometers. So you can run like six minutes, let's say, if you don't run that fast and accomplish the same type of exercise that you've been, you, you would be doing in 30 minutes or 40 minutes, whatever the, the pace you run. That's incredible. Also, when it comes to using all these tools, uh, I think for an average person, uh, even doing push-ups can become difficult at times, yeah. right? So does yeah. this, and I know Pilates also uses some of these principles of, you know, using machines and so on. So how can this, what are the key benefits of this exoskeleton, which anybody can use from a optimization perspective? So it's definitely increasing your muscle mass. Uh, it's like, a, it, 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 it's an hybrid body system. So it's using your own body as the machine to work. With this, you can go anywhere. You don't need a gym. You, you, actually, you are your own gym and you can practice everywhere, at home, outside, inside. Uh, no excuses anymore. If you have that, there is no excuses. You have to work out because you put it on your back, you attach your, uh, uh, your strap and this is it. The benefit of that is like, you're going to get stronger faster, uh, definitely. Uh, and uh, there's scientific evidence on that, that uh, strength training that way uh, increase power, increase resistance, uh, uh, increase uh, the size of your muscle, everything. You know, I, I, I'm not this type of guy that like uh, a bodybuilder uh, type of uh, musculation. I think that the real strength come from what you're capable of achieving. And at the end of the day, you have to remember something. You have to control your body. This is the point. If you fail, you, know, you, you should know how to fail. If you're packed with air and big muscle and you cannot move or scratch your back, this is useless. If you can make a back flip or front flip or uh, uh, um, handstand and walk or whatsoever or, or move, this is important. This is longevity. This is the way that you're going to uh, move forward into life. Uh, so all the benefit of this, uh, uh, this tool is keeping you active first, uh, making you stronger, but mobility and flexibility goes with it. So we just celebrated International Day of Yoga a couple of days back. Yeah. And right now, yoga as a form of exercise is getting massive adoption across the world. Mm -hmm. uh, what is your view on yoga as a form oh. of exercise? And you know, is that also something part of yeah. your optimization? You know what? Yoga is one of the best out there. 
Uh, and I think that if you start by doing yoga, definitely you can move into calisthenics because there's a cross bridge between yoga and calisthenics. We're using pretty much the same move, uh, like the bridge that you've Actually, that picture was sick, the, the one you had on uh, your Instagram. Uh, those things are related to calisthenics. They are proof that you're mastering your body in a certain way. And said, add said, uh, they come from yoga, stretch, uh, flexibility, they come from yoga. The only things that uh, yoga is missing a bit is strength training. I don't, I'm not saying that you don't need strength for doing yoga. You, you do. But the strength that you have to get to do calisthenics is maybe one step uh, above that. But yoga is phenomenal. Yeah, and combining yoga and meditation, best of work. So, so can you give some context of, let's say somebody is 50 years old or 55 years old. And what, can, because, you know, by that time, they feel that, hey, my body may not be able to do all these exercises. So how can somebody who are aging can adopt this and then what do you think? I mean, where can they live? I mean, and we talk about this a lot that, you know, can humans live 200 years? So yeah, can right humans now, live? India, unfortunately, has among the low life expectancy. The life yeah. expectancy in India is only 67 compared to Japan, which is at 86. Canada also has a very high expectancy. 80, 84 or 82, yes, in Canada, yes. But the problem with most of these high expectancy life is that people's old age is very poor quality of life. They are in yeah. old age home, dependent on dialysis and all kinds of medical treatment. So how can somebody live longer and even while they are older, have a much healthy and active life? Easy. Start from here. You know, if you decide that you're going to live longer and better and in a healthier uh, way, your body will definitely follow what you, your mind is set for. Uh, the problem we have in our society is that uh, you get to 40 years old and people say, yeah, you know what, you shouldn't do that sport. Uh, it's too dangerous for you. Uh, it's too risky. So people move to do golf uh, because they're in the 40. Uh, then you shouldn't do uh, hang up on that thing. So, you know, you can hurt yourself. They don't take that freaking risk that is required to make your brain understand that you are capable of doing it. Uh, when your brain got the message, oh, I can do that. I want to do more. Start like that. Get your butt off the couch. Go out. You're 50. Move. Make sure that you hit LC, but move and start by doing something, not contemplating the future of being on assisted medically or whatsoever, but contemplating the future of being able to go with kid outside and play with kid. This is the principle of living longer, better. Uh, but it starts from your head, from your mindset. If you don't decide it, no one will do it for you. And uh, unfortunately, most people today, because of their busy life, say, well, I have no time for that. I have no time but they spend two hours on their freaking social media uh, looking at things that are useless instead of taking half of that one hour to make themselves better, breathe, go outside, move, do some things, start by doing push-up. You know, push-up is one of the most <laughs> important exercises. It's the, the simplest, simplest exercise that anyone can do. Kids can do it. Old people can do it if they try to do it and they adapt their body to do it. And even if you're 80, you can start doing push up. There is no reason not for, except if you're in really bad condition, but uh, then it's because you didn't do it before. Uh, but this is it, you know, uh, yeah. mindset. Also, you know, in the post COVID world, we also heard so much about people with comorbidities. Once again, there are so many people with diabetes, with blood pressure and all kinds of uh, uh, comorbidities and uh, metabolic conditions. What is your message to them? Can they also adopt or do these underlying conditions have any challenges for them? 
Yeah, you know what? This is the problem of for society once again because people eat shit. They don't know what food is for the uh, body, uh, and you hear you hear so many type of diet and uh, keto, vegan, whatsoever. I don't care. I don't. I I don't do diet. Uh, we're human. We're made to uh, eat almost everything but eat LC and eat regularly and not overeating because once again, you know, it's your brain getting the signal that you have enough protein in, in, in your stomach. It's your brain, your tongue, knowing that you have enough fat in your body. Don't exceed that. Listen to your body, uh, obesity and morbidity due to that. Uh, it's because people are not moving. That's the first cause. And the second cause is, People that are not moving are even eating badly uh, more than others that are moving. So they put two things together. We need to educate our society that moving and eating are the principal factor of longevity. When you master those two, then you can do meditation, you can do other things, but start by doing these two things, moving and eating clean. Uh, I think you make a very important point, right? Because people want to always, oh, which diet are you on? Or, you know, so it is not about the diet. It's about making sure you eat right and you eat when you are full, you stop eating. You That's don't it. overeat. I think people tend to overeat. Also, yeah. you talk a lot about mind and it almost is quite clear that it's your mind which becomes old and not your body. And uh, one, if you keep a young mind and to keep a young mind, you keep challenging it, keep learning new things, keep learning new skills that automatically makes your body young, which is yeah. this kind of yeah. very counterintuitive because yeah. people, are, people think it the other way. Also, yeah. you talked about this very interesting concept of calisthenics as a form of exercise and how uh, just your own body weight and just simple movements and not about, you know, sweating it out and yeah, or lifting weights. Uh, you can, you can lift weight. I have not, nothing against that, but uh, calisthenics has this beauty uh, of, uh, and it's one of the oldest sport, actually. We human have evoluted and I'm a Darwinist, uh, 100%. We evolute in the way that our brain got bigger we are capable of more thinking we're the only species on earth with the cortex but that's also a problem because we're the only species on earth thinking of and and worrying for things that will never happen in our life that has a negative impact and then you eat uh, bad because you have negative impact and you get sick Most because of that eating. there's a word for it emotional <laughs> eating yeah that's it but the body in our body, when you do any type of exercises, like lifting weights, you have a concentration of movement that are going to trigger a certain part of your uh, nervous system only. When you do calisthenics, we as humans have the possibility and the potential to use every single muscle and nerve in our system. And you can have as much strength on this finger that you could have on your arm if you practice it the proper way uh, most of the time, people are not using their hands, so they end up with arthrosis and stuff like that. They're not using their wrists, because, and then they cannot hang up on some things. Grip is a sign of longevity. The more grip you have, apparently, according to science, there's publication on it. Yeah, the more grip you have, the longer you're going to live. Uh, and calisthenic is all around grip. Most of the time you're on parlet on bars, you need to grip it and you need to send strong signal to your brain that you need all the muscle. And, and this is it, you know, you're on doing a movement. Most of the time, if you don't grip too hard, your brain will not think that it's hard enough and you will give up on a movement before you even start. So once again, mind body connection makes you stronger faster uh, and this is the old principle of calisthenic is getting you know when i started calisthenic i discovered myself some muscle that i didn't know about that i had no idea they exist 
John, I think what you've just said is amazing. I think your grip is one of the most important parameter of your health. Oh, yeah. And I think everybody out here, I know we can go for hours together talking to John and I'm going to get him back on the show uh, where we will discuss more. But once again, thanks a lot for your time. I think we learned a lot. And I believe that everybody is now going to get a good grip on your topic. <laughs> I request everyone to follow John on Instagram and all his other social media handles. He also runs a very interesting uh, Instagram and a media site called Biohackers Update. And if you are really serious about optimizing living longer and not really burning out your body, he's the man to go to. Once Thank again, you. thanks a lot. Thank you. I'm very honored. Thank you so much for this time. It was awesome. It's real. Uh, you do beautiful stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.